Hi, everyone. I hope all my learners are in now. Good afternoon, grade nine, and all the other guests. Um, welcome to this second lesson of systems and control, pneumatic and hydraulic systems that we started yesterday. Um, let us quickly look at what we learned yesterday about pneumatics and hydraulics. Let us look at the following hydraulic systems. Um, we have system A and system B. System A shows um, two syringes of an unequal size. Remember yesterday, we made videos of a pneumatic system and a hydraulic system. Now, these systems were of cylinders that are of an equal size and an equal size. So let us look at this. Now we have a, let me just show you the input and the output on system A you have the out, output on the big cylinder. On system B, the big cylinder is the input. So we are going to see what is the relationship of these two cylinders as far as the input and the output is. So now when you look at system A, the smaller cylinder is the master cylinder and system B, the bigger cylinder is the master cylinder. Now, think about this and jot it down so that you can reason around the systems, these hydraulic systems that are uh, demonstrated in system A and system B. Both the cylinders have fluid, so they are, jot down your answer. Right, number two, in system A, the smaller cylinder is the driver cylinder or the master cylinder. In system A, you could press down the plunger. You saw the plungers, I showed, I showed you the, what the plungers are. Um, if you press down the plunger of the input cylinder for one centimeter, the output cylinder would move, um, would move how many centimeters, okay? Let me take you back to this, okay? System A, you put, you press down the plunger, the plunger, this plunger, you press it down by one centimeter. What could be the movement of this hydraulic fluid in the output, in the output cylinder? Think about that and jot your answer. Next question. In system B, you press, if you press the plunger of the input cylinder for two centimeters, the output cylinder would move how many centimeters? Okay, let me take you back. Right, this is system B. We are moving, this is the input cylinder. We are moving the plunger by two centimeters. What would be the output, the movement of the hydraulic fluid here? Think about that and jot down your answer. Okay. Right, when you have looked at your answers, please, Think.
for a few minutes what you can conclude about the force transfer in system A and system B. Think that these are two unequal syringes. So the input will not be as big as the output. Okay, to assist you, let us go back to, the, to these cylinders. Okay, think about the force transfer. What can you conclude about the force transfer here and the force transfer there? Okay. Your conclusion? What happens when this is the driver or the master on the imp or the input cylinder driving this one? Okay. What do you think will be the movement here? And what happens when this one is the master, the driver or the input, okay? Now, when force is applied here, what is the of the force here? Think about that and make your conclusion, write down your answer, okay? So that you show an understanding of what we did yesterday. All right. Okay, now let us go to the responses. The first question was, what type of a system is this? Is this a pneumatic? or a hydraulic system? The answer is, it is a hydraulic system. Why do we say it's a hydraulic system? Because it has hydraulic fluid. Remember we said it's pneumatic when it is a, 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 a system that contains air, but because we see the green liquid, then we say it is a hydraulic a system. Hydraulic systems have a fluid or hydraulic fluid, all right? Then the second question was where the smaller cylinder is the master and the bigger cylinder is the slave. And remember we said the smaller cylinder is only half the size of the bigger cylinder. So the, the answer there uh, is that one movement, one, mil, one centimeter movement, on the master cylinder would, would give an output of 0 0.5 centimeters on the output. I hope you understand that. And then where the bigger cylinder is the master cylinder and the smaller cylinder is the slave cylinder or the output cylinder, we see here that the output is doubled because we said these cylinders have a, a relationship that the bigger cylinder is um, twice as big as the smaller cylinder. I hope you, 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 you can understand that. All right, let us go to Noma Tamsanga. You have a raised hand. Um, Nama Tamsang Nama Tamsang saying something. Can I hear your concern, Nama Tamsang? I cannot hear Nama Tamsang speaking. Can I please hear Namas Tamsangwa speaking? Namas Tamsangwa, you are saying something? Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes, my darling. How do you calculate? How do we calculate? 
Okay. Okay, let me assist you there, Noma Tamsanga. We said we assume that the big cylinder is double the size of the small cylinder. Do you understand? Say maybe the big cylinder is um, maybe a 20 millimeter cylinder and the smaller cylinder is a 10 millimeter cylinder. Then it would mean whatever input is done in the big cylinder, it is doubled in the small cylinder. I hope that the rest of the class can understand that. Okay, thank you. All right, so the last question was our conclusion. Okay, Nosipo, Nosipo's hand is raised. Nosipo. No sipo. Um, ma'am, please go back to the previous slide. Okay, my darling. Thank you. This one with the questions, no, Sipo? Is it this one that you are looking for, no, Sipo? No, Sipo, yes. Yes, ma'am, that's the slide. Thank you. Yes, my darling. What is it that you wanted to ask about this? Uh, no, ma'am, I wanted to take a picture so I can write, write down everything in my book. Okay, my darling. Thank you. All right. All right. Now, um, in a hydraulic system, our, our conclusion about a uh, force transfer, remember Pascal's, we, when you think about force transfer, you must also revisit Pascal's principle. But now we want to be practical from the cylinders that we have seen. In a hydraulic system where a smaller cylinder is an input driver or master cylinder, like in system A, the output force is reduced. Why is it reduced? Because um, the, 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 master, the master cylinder is smaller than the bigger cylinder. Where the bigger cylinder is the driver and the, uh, the, the output force is increased. Okay? So that is uh, what we can use from that. Now, I want us to have a look at the application of what we have seen learning about a hydraulic systems, but looking at syringes, because syringes are only modeling the real world. I want us to look at this, at, at real hy uh, hydraulic systems, like real hydraulic machines. Look at this one. This is called a hydraulic press. There are different functions of hydraulic press, just that uh, they depend on the, on the application, what, what, 
where is the hydraulic press used? So this one, its function is to make washers. These washers that you see here, the function of this hydraulic press is to, is to make um, these washers. A hydraulic press works on the principle of Pascal's law, which states that when pressure is applied to a confined fluid, the pressure change occurs throughout the entire fluid. Within the hydraulic press, there is a piston that works as a pump, okay? Um, so we, the pump is the input. So we, we, uh, we can look at this cylinder here, you see. So this should be the plunger or the, the pump where we, we, we apply our, uh, where we exert our input force. There is a piston that works as a pump that provides a modest mechanical force. This mechanical force, mechanical force will travel to this area, to this output cylinder, okay? And then um, the hydraulic press here is used to make washers, okay? But there are other applications of the hydraulic press. Okay, you can use it for stamping. Uh, you can use it to compress garbage in a garbage truck and any other function where there is pressure that is needed on a workpiece. This is a workpiece, okay? So this is a hydraulic press, okay? Do you understand a hydraulic press? Let us think about the garbage truck because it's what we see every day. You will see that uh, when the garbage truck maybe collects garbage in form of cans, those cans are compressed within the truck so that the truck can go from place to place collecting garbage. It is compressed and then it is um, loaded so that, um, um, who has her hand raised? All right. Okay, so the garbage truck is also another machine that uses the, this principle of the hydraulic press. I hope you all understand this machine. It uses a hydraulic or a pneumatic system. All right, but I guess you'd have to understand that if it, it's a hydraulic system, another thing that you must note about hydraulic systems from the input cylinder, to this connecting tube, to this output cylinder, there should be no leaks because the leaks will reduce the force that is applied on the input cylinder. So our calculations, if maybe you are, you are, you are calculating the efficiency, we'll call it mechanical advantage of the system, it will be affected by the leak. Just imagine if you have a leak that will release air if it's a pneumatic system. So the pressure here will be affected, okay? So um, that is what uh, people must always take care of when they are operating their machines. I hope you can all understand. Okay. Um, let us look at hydraulic press, uh, the, the, the hydraulic press. Now, hydraulic press has a plunger too. So this is the input cylinder. It has the plunger. This gray area here will be the plunger. This whole, whole part will be our um, input cylinder. So this is where you apply your, you exert your, your, your input force and then the yellow part will be our hydraulic fluid. And then at the end of the output, this will be our output cylinder, okay? Now, there is a part that is called the rem. The rem will be what is exerting pressure on the workpiece. This will be the workpiece that is being compressed. Maybe in a garbage truck, this will be the garbage that is being uh, uh, compressed. In that washer making machine, this will be the metal sheet that is being compressed and it is cut to make those 
um, the, those washers, all right? Now, this is what uh, the, 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 the system looks like. But now when you can look here, this is now just the plunger being pressed down, exerting pressure, the rem, you can see the rem has gone down. Now the pressure is on the workpiece and now the hydraulic press is doing its work. Hello, Bulani. Bulani. Hello, ma'am. Ma yes, darling. So yes, in darling. such cases, do, is this, what is the thing that pushes the cylinders down for it to be, for the process to happen? All right. You know that um, in, in earlier in the operation of machines, we used to uh, apply manual. When I say manual, I mean hand. Machines used to be hand operated. But now, as, 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 as modern technology advances, the input is not always manual. Sometimes the input is um, electronically or digitally operated. You can have... An, an, an um, electrical input here so that it presses down the plunger. Okay? Oh, yes, ma'am. Thanks to me, a computer operated. But maybe at the beginning of, uh, in earlier times when, the, when, when they started making these machines, I believe that this plunger would be operated by hand. Someone had to apply pressure here. But now, because some, some, sometimes a human hand cannot apply enough pressure on the plunger, I guess they would have something that is computer operated that will come and press down the plunger so that the hydraulic uh, fluid will move down to this uh, output cylinder and the rem goes down to work on the workpiece. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, my darling. So you see now, this is the compression that takes place there. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, now let us look at another machine, another hydraulic machine. This is the hydraulic check. I guess some of you have seen this at home, okay? This is what I, I, maybe we've seen our daddies or our brothers or uncles using this to lift the car, especially when they're changing tires, okay? Now, let us look at what it is made of. A hydraulic jack has, a hydraulic jack has, um, a lever has a lever that you pump, you pump the lever and the, 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 the input force on the lever that is being pumped, it, 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 it affects the input cylinder. It touches the input cylinder. Now you must note, this is, this is not just one press, but it needs to be pumped, pumped, pumped. I'll show you why then that causes a movement of hydraulic fluid. Then the hydraulic fluid will go to the output cylinder and, and um, raise the output cylinder, okay? That is how this kaje works. And I hope that you can understand that, okay? Now let us see how it works. Um, we have now gone deeper into the operation of how a car check works. Remember, I said, unlike the hydraulic press, where you have to press once, you have to press once here, and then the hydraulic fluid moves here, the principle is different because you must look at the size of these two cylinders. This input cylinder is a lot smaller than the 
output cylinder. I'm sure you can also identify the REM. Remember the REM on, the, on that um, other machine that we have looked at. Now, here, the lever, you have to pump. You have to pump Udirile. Where's my Udirile? Udirile. Okay. All right. Um, you have to pump here. You have to pump. While you are pumping, remember this is fluid. While you are busy pumping, pumping, uh, you are exerting force on what? On the, in, on, on, on the plunger of the input cylinder. Because you need to raise this oil here so that it goes, it raises the rem. Okay, imagine the rem here would be the part that attaches to the car, all right, to the bottom part of the car. Now, while you are pumping, you are pumping here, remember the oil does not need to go back. So that is why we have valves here. We have valves here, okay? So these valves, they regulate the movement of oil from the cylinder to the, from the input cylinder to the output cylinder. So for a movement here, we need to work a lot here. So the, there is a lot of input force applied here by pumping because we want it to give strength. Remember a car is not something that is easy to, to lift. So we need to strengthen this output cylinder by pumping so that the ramp goes up. So the input here will be much higher, but the output, the output will be that the ram will go up and lift the car. All right. Now, while that is happening, while that is happening, these valves, they control that the oil does not go back. All the oil that has been, all the oil that has been pumped in must not go back so that there isn't um, a waste. Udirile. Udirile, 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 where are you, Udirile? I'm trying to find Udirile. Okay. Eugene, could you please unmute Udirile for me? I'm trying to find here, I can't find here. Udirile, please speak to me. Udirile. Okay. Ma'am. Yes, you're Lisa. Uh, Ma'am, what you really was asking is, what is a valve? Right, a valve.
very good question. Have you ever seen the, the, the tire of a bicycle? Yes, ma'am. The, the tire of a bicycle has a point where you attach the pump, where you pump in the air, where you pump in the air, and then sort of you close that. When you, you, when you detach the pump, you close. That is an example of a valve. A valve is something that controls. It's like a stopper, Yoliswa. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, it's then, like a stopper. Yeah, it, 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 it goes one way so that uh, when, when, um, it, it, when, when, when pressure is applied and then it stops, it closes. It allows one-way movement. Okay. okay yeah, it is just a part that controls the flow, the flow of the fluid, so that it closes that it doesn't go back. So you, you have your valves on this system, you have a valve here and a valve here. Okay. Are you happy? All right. Now, you have, um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, you have um, other cylinders that you see there. Let me explain them. The yellow cylinders that you, that you see that are going up, the, verticals, the other vertical cylinders here, they are reservoir. Reservoir, like they're like storage, okay? so that they channel the flow of this high pressure oil, the oil that will be lift, used, to, used to lift this uh, output cylinder. This is like storage, it's reservoir for low pressure oil. So this is high pressure oil. So the, the, the force that is being applied here, it must go and work mostly on this, on this hydraulic fluid. In this case, it is oil, all right? So these two, they are reservoirs, reservoirs, so that um, at times you, you hear that um, during service, this, maybe a machine like a car, you have to replace the oil because from all the friction of the pressures that are in, involved, the force that is involved in the friction, it makes the oil dirty. So for maintenance, sometimes this oil has to be changed like they do when they do car servicing. All right. I hope you understand that. Okay. All right. That is how a car check works. All right. Now, um, the main part of a hydraulic car jack is the is a big output cylinder that sticks out on top. That is what li lifts the car. I showed you that part, which is called the rim. Inside the bottle is a tank with oil. I have talked about that. Okay. Um, a tank with oil. The oil from this tank passes through a ball valve into the space when the, where the input cylinder is. The ball valve doesn't allow the fluid to pass back, okay? I think that answers your question about the valve. The valve controls the flow of the oil. The pump handle is our lever. So that is what you pump when you are busy raising the car, lifting the car. The output cylinder pushes a small distance each time the input cylinder is pushed down because it is smaller. So the output on the big cylinder will be smaller. So that is why you have to pump, 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 pump to get a movement. When the input cylinder pushed downwards, the valve closes and the next valve opens. The oil is then pushed past the valve and pushes the output cylinder upwards. When the input cylinder is pulled upwards, the valve opens and the oil is drawn from the, from the tank. The other valve closes so that the oil cannot flow back 
from the side uh, of the input cylinder. Okay, then when you do this pumping movement, this pumping movement, because the oil, remember Pascal's principle, the force will be contained in the, in the hydraulic fluid. In this case, it is the oil. So when it is contained by the, 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 the closing of the valves, then it goes up to the output cylinder. All right, that is how it operates. Now, let's look at um, the mechanical advantage. I want you guys, I know you have learned a formula, and I'll share, share with you some formula of mechanical advantage. But I want us to make sense of it. I don't want us to cram because you want to make sense of it. Of the, of, the, of the formula. In all calculations, please make sense of the formula. Look at these two cylinders. You see these blocks? These blocks, it takes four, a pack, maybe let's say a pack of four blocks that are placed on each other to get one movement equivalent of these four packs, but it is spread. It is just one movement that is equal to the thickness of one of these blocks. Can you understand that? Okay, so it means the force here, the, 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 if this is the input for one movement, okay, of this for one movement equivalent to this, you would need to make four times the effort to get this one movement. Mohajit, shoot Mohajit. Eugene, please. Please allow Mohajit to speak. Mohajit? Eugene, please allow Mohajit to say something. Hi there. Hi, Mohajit. No, it's, it's Eugene. Sorry, we're not able to unmute the students. We have to ask their permission. Oh. So if they do not allow it, then we can't unmute them. So I think it's better for now not to speak to them directly, only let them do their questions and answers in the chat section. It's okay. Now, I think that answers the question. I want to clarify this question. If the blue cylinder in figure, this is figure 11, I'm sorry. Um, if the blue cylinder moves uh, down by 12 millimeters, how much will the red cylinder move up? Okay, because we understand that this should form only a quarter of this, the size of this input cylinder, okay? So the answer there is that if the blue cylinder is pushed down through the green volume on the right, the red cylinder will move up through the uh, green volume on the left. If the surface area of the base of the output cylinder is four times the surface area of the base, of the input cylinder, the output force will be four times as big as the input force. The output distance will be a quarter of the input distance. Why? I put this illustration to indicate that this is only a quarter of this, okay? So if this is the input, one, one input here, 
will make a order output. Okay. Four outputs here will make one complete output here. Four inputs here, four input efforts will make one complete output here. So we must think about that when we do our calculations. Okay. Um, now, I want us to understand the calculations. This is a guide. Please make a shot of this if you need to. Take a shot of this. Calculations about hydraulic systems. These are the formula that we use when we uh, calculate, when we do calculations about our hydraulic systems. Mechanical advantage, we all know it's load over effort, but this will help you. This part here will always help to, uh, to remember. You see mechanical advantage is load over effort. Load is, a mechanical advantage, just assume that there's a multiplication sign here. Load will equal a mechanical advantage times effort. Effort will be load over mechanical advantage. I don't think we'll forget the calculations because we will be working on calculations, okay? We need to calculate the efficiency of machines. But remember here, this is what is important about machines. Machines must always give us mechanical advantage because technology, we generally say technology is there to make our lives easier. So whenever we make machines, it's because we cannot do a task manually. We want a machine that is going to make the task easier. If we want to lift a car, we cannot use our hands to lift a car. So we must make a machine that we will use to lift the car so that the, 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 the that machine will give us a mechanical advantage. All right. So in, 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 in mechanical systems and control, advantage is very important. Calculation of mechanical advantage is always very important. So as we are going on learning different systems within system control, we look at that system and we check the mechanical advantage of that system. But then also we need sometimes to calculate the load, okay? We also need to calculate the effort so that we can know how much effort is needed for us to perform a task using a certain machine. Okay, please keep this for yourself so that you can um, use it in future. Another resource for you that you will be using when calculating <coughs> As um, doing calculations of systems, and you can take a shot of this. Okay, it's pretty much the same thing that I had given you in the previous slide. Okay, now, as I said, we need to look at the make uh, the, 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 the calculations of different hydraulic systems. But what we'll be calculating more than other calculations, we'll be doing calculations of mechanical advantage. I think that is the most important calculation of mechanical systems. We need to know why do we have this machine in the first place? Thank you very much. I think I can uh, take the questions now, if you do have any.